each other, right? What's cool about having more than 80 minutes in the classroom is you get to, you know, the learning doesn't stop once the bell rings. We can read about it in a textbook. We can, we can see it on a map or we can hear folks talking about it, but until you actually have your feet on the ground and you're like the wind in your hair, it, it, that's when you build that real connection. Studies have shown that environmental education fosters greater student engagement and academic achievement, develops problem-solving skills, encourages creativity, promotes social connections and growth, and establishes a personal connection with nature. We could really live at the pace of the day, live at the pace of nature, live at the pace of the river, and then you know, see some pretty awesome stuff. We saw bald eagles yesterday, we saw a golden eagle last night. We've got a great ecologist with us helping us identify different plants. I work for the Bureau of Land Management and we're out today with our friends group, Colorado Canyons Association, taking some AP environmental science students from Central High School on the river. This is the first group that we've had out here, so they're going to be setting up some monitoring for us in an area where we have an invasive species, the Russian knapweed. One of the things we're going to try and do is get uh, biological control established, so the students will be releasing gall wasp and then setting up some monitoring to track how that gall wasp is affecting that Russian knapweed population over time, with hopefully different classes coming each year. Invasive species are, are part of the environmental science curriculum, so we've talked about it quite a bit throughout the year, and it's pretty special to get to actually come out and you know, see the science in action and have the students getting their hands dirty and seeing what's really happening in the natural world. Right now, we are just exploring. We kind of learned about the native species here and the grass. This is invasive. This is cheatgrass, Bromus tectorum. It can change the fire regime by adding a lot of fine fuel. So fires carry farther and can burn faster. And then it can regerminate really well after fire. So it comes in and outcompetes a lot of the natives that might establish after fire and can create a monoculture of just cheatgrass. Nature is kind of the ultimate teacher enforcer. It's more encouraging them to explore and discover things on their own. And then I could be there to answer questions or maybe guide some of their thinking. But and this is, I think, true experiential learning to just be immersed in the experience, which we just can't do, at least not all the time, in the classroom. I enjoy it more because then Instead of just reading about something or actually seeing a video about something, you actually get to do something because I like more hands-on learning. It's really exciting to be able to create opportunities for the students to take some of the knowledge that they've been introduced to in textbooks and put it into tangible, authentic experiences for them. This sort of project-based, place-based environmental education is the essence of the Greening STEM approach. We were taking squares and putting them on Russian knapweed, measuring how much knapweed were on there, how many buds, how bad you know the grouping was and everything. And once we did all that and we had all of our data, we took the gall wasps and we released them at all of our sites. The students have set up the monitoring site that will be a long-term monitoring site. We have the data. Then once we have a couple of years data, then we'll be able to look at that and get an idea of what's happening at the site. The biggest thing we'll be looking for is the gall wasp establishment to see if this release took or, or if we need to do another release in a year or two. We'll also get an idea of other types of restoration that we might need to be doing if we need to be doing native plant seedings, things like that. Environmental monitoring is essential for public land agencies like BLM when addressing the needs of protected areas. The Greening STEM model combines BLM's education and restoration efforts at McInnes Canyons. In the fall, we did a biological survey of the football field outside the high school. Um, and I think it was successful, but it also felt really disconnected from the natural world. And for them to be able to come out here, collect real data, have a real impact, to learn something and to have a lot of fun, it's my hope that this is a memory that, that stays with them forever. I truly feel honored and, and privileged to be able to be a part of that.